like this week after a tough loss? Well, I mean, it's been good. You know, we have we have enough maturity on our team team to be able to put some things in perspective. You know, it was one of those games, Jared, you being there, you know, uh, you know, some games uh, you, you just dis, you're disappointed to lose. You know, some games it hurt. And those that hurt came those games that you felt like that you, you know, um, kind of gave it away. That's not to take any away from Louisiana Tech. They had to make huge plays. You know, they made huge plays down that stretch. And we had to do several different things to give them a chance to keep making huge plays. Um, that was the, that was a tough thing. Um, positive things that we take from it was we played so good for 37 minutes. Uh, I wonder what more I could ask for them for 37 minutes in a very difficult situation. It's a very good team. Uh, we were totally in control. And then you, you know, have some things don't go well for you. Uh, like I said, give them credit. They jumped up and made made huge shots. And, you know, winning, losing is a fine line. Um, free throws are always important. Uh, they made made those couple at the end, 60-some percent shooter. Uh, and we didn't make some down the stretch. So, so when you look at it all as a whole, uh, we're all disappointed. Uh, you put that behind you and look at the positive things from it, how good we were for 37 minutes, and see if we can correct a couple of those things that maybe we didn't do the last three minutes that we got to do better. Hey, Coach. Coach Muhammad 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 rivals. And um, so you have a four-game winning streak against FIU. Um, so what are you guys going to have to do tomorrow to uh, keep that going? Well, Drew, I mean, um, uh, they're a very capable team, number one. Uh, they have one of the better three-point shooting teams in the country. Uh, a bunch of guys can really shoot the basketball. Uh, they've had some really nice wins. Um, you know, what we've got to be able to do is, you know, the point guard Brewer is really good getting in that paint. You know, can shoot that basketball, and he's a little guy, but he's kind of here. That snake makes everybody go. Uh, Denver Jones is running mate beside him. Those two guys, you know, are really difficult guards to guard. Uh, Love it, can shoot it. And again, they've got they got multiple shooters. There's, there's four guys, five guys that's made uh, double figures in threes, three of them above 20. And that's a bunch of three pointers. So uh, you got to be able to limit that some, you know, and they're going to live by it. They're going to shoot a lot of them now. Uh, so you've got to be able to limit that some. And, you know, our team, we're a different kind of team than maybe uh, Drew winning those four in the past four years, whatever it's been, we could always throw that ball to the post and get baskets, uh, overpower them inside a little bit. Again, that's just not who we are right now. You know, we have to get it in the paint a different way, uh, driving it and, you know, Jay Marl for ball screen dunks and put back dunks and all that. So it makes it just a little bit more difficult the way you play. But uh, to answer your question, though, uh, we got to be able to do a good job on that three-point shot. <clears throat> Coach Muhammad Ahmad from WBKO. Good to see you again after a while. Hope you had a good happy new year. Um, I know you said that Louisiana Tech loss, you know, you want to put a bow on that and move on from it. But that last four-minute stretch where they came back and bit you guys, you know, when you look at that specific four-minute stretch, what do you take away from that? And how much more important are those lessons going to be, like, going into – tomorrow's game building off what you touched on? Well, hey, Mom, it was probably, it was a, even three minutes. That's kind of where it started at. You know, we had a, we had a bad turnover at three minute mark. Bad turnover. And we didn't have to be going nowhere at that point. That's the number one thing you gotta learn. Three minute mark, that tie, that score is not important then. And we're up at 12. What's really important is that time making that time run. And, you know, turnover just didn't cost us two. And, and don't even get me started on this. I talked to, you know, Jerry, maybe we talked about it a little bit after the game. But, you know, I basically get a technical off that same turnover, not talking to the official, but yelling at one of my players. I had the turnover. And how I got a technical, and again, 
No one ever told me I got a technical yet to this moment. I still just take it's on me. No one ever addressed it with me. No one has ever said anything about it. Uh, so that was a really, it, it, as a four point play, it could have been a six point play because we had the ball. We had the ball up. That's the one, that's the one play that you can point to. You know, missing free throws, no one misses them on purpose, part of the game. Uh, you don't like it. Um, winning, losing is a fine line. One free throw changes the whole outcome of the game. So those are things that uh, when you say learn from, you can learn from those mistakes because that was one we sped ourselves up. Free throws are part of it, Muhammad. He is hoping you're in that situation next time, you know, um, still going one for four. You know, we go two for four right there. Two for four wins the game. Right from WBK. Halfway point of the season for you. This is the 15th game in what is a 30 game schedule. Take stock of where you are right now as a team. How do you feel about where you are, what you like about it, and the challenges ahead for you in the second half? You know, friend, um, you know, naturally like to win every game. But, but I, I do, I've kept things in perspective. I think everybody knows we've played a really difficult schedule. We haven't backed away from nobody, hadn't run from nobody. Picked up some games we didn't have to pick up. You know, we pick up, pick up a, Ale and could have went somewhere and got a W. So, um, you know, I, I like where my team's been. You know, we've had some really, really good wins against really good programs. And, um, you know, we battled through a stretch uh, without Josh and Jarrett against Eastern Kentucky. Don't even know how we pulled that one out yet. Then you got to turn around and play a Buffalo without a Josh. So through all those things, there's been some bumps and bruises with that. But I like where my team's at. I like my team. I like, you know, how we've been, you know, preparing. And, again, you know, we go down Louisiana Tech after a Southern Miss cancels us. And you never like starting off on the road after a layoff. Now we go on the road against one of the better opponents in the league after, you know, a 10-day layoff almost. You don't ever like that. And again, like I said, for 37 minutes, we're about as good as we could be. So I like where my team's at. We got a small margin for error. Um, we're a different kind of team because we don't throw it in the post a lot. Um, but we've been pretty efficient offensively. We scoring some points. Um, you know, defensively, probably, I know this, playing more zone ever played in my life um, based on some personnel. For the most part, been – Pretty efficient with it. Going to give up some things, but uh, playing a lot of zones helped us with a shortened bench. It's helped keep us, keep us out of foul trouble. And, um, and again, big man's been a – he's been a pretty pretty good load in there around that realm. Coach Maxwell trained from uh, – um, oh, All right, Brett, you go, man. Um, okay, Maxwell's up. You, I'm going I'm to referee this. I can see right now. Maxwell, you win. You're up. Okay, Coach. <laughs> All righty. All righty, Coach. Um, you touched a little bit on this already, but you, you had two week, two games within a two-and-a-half-week span. This will be the third game within that span. How nice is it to finally be back, back in Bowling Green and just getting back into a rhythm with uh, CUSA play picking up? Yeah, nice we'll be getting back in a rhythm, getting in some playing. I mean, we all like a bye week. You just don't want it in your first week. I mean, that's what we've got. Uh, we got a sell and miss who didn't play us. So that turns into one game. Then you turn around your first week, you get another bye week your first week. Don't ask why and how, how that happens. So you really don't like that. You like to get a bye week halfway through your season or so, you know, where you can step back in and really get some rest. Rest wasn't what we needed right now. We need to get back in that rhythm of playing some games. And um, so it's good to be back home. It's good to start playing some games. I think we got three here at home um, in the next eight days. So there'll be that's three games coming up. Okay, uh, who, who died? That was me, but uh, I mean, I was just going to ask you, Coach. Right, I mean, yeah. well, how do you how do you keep your guys into rhythm, not playing in a week? Like, what do you guys go through practice to so you guys aren't rusty when you take the court on Saturday? Well, Brad, it's it's a fine line, you know. Uh, you know, it's with a shortened bench. I uh, don't know if you can ever practice really the way you want to practice physically and all that you know, simulate games. Because when you're simulating games out there, 
very much in practice, your your rate of injury opportunities to get injured goes way up. So, you know, I have a mature team. Um, you know, it's about, you know, keeping them fresh physically about wearing them out during this time. I mean, you can wear them out during practice now real easy. So it's about, it is a fine line, keeping us fresh at the same time, trying to keep that rust knocked off uh, where you got some game simulation going on. But I think the biggest thing that helps some um, is, you know, I've got some uh, mature guys, some musicians, starts with that point guard. He's going to be the same no matter what. And Cam and Luke, those mature guys. And, uh, you know, Josh is, since Josh has been back from COVID, you all know he's been a, he's been a really, really effective player for us. So uh, we, we have some different kind of maturity that, I think we've we've handled it pretty well so far. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, I know you've mentioned Josh, and we talked about him a little bit after Saturday's game and how good he's been since he's been back. Um, and it sounded like you said you thought the game slowed down for him a little bit. Is there any reason for that, do you think, or is it just kind of, you know, one of those things? You know, Jared, yeah, you hope for a fifth-year guy it slowed down even before now, you know? I don't know. Everybody has different stages of their – uh, lives maybe in their games they do that you know maybe you know since then he's been coming off the bench hasn't he is that correct yeah. early before they've been starting wasn't he uh, you know maybe coming off the bench and you know he still plays starter minutes so it doesn't even matter uh, but there's no question uh, you know I think I saw some stats Zach put together he's 16 for 18 from the foul line since he's been back He's nine for 14 from the three-point line. Now, who thought you'd ever say that or see that? Nine for 14 from the three-point line. Hey, Muhammad, quit yawning. Muhammad. Muhammad. Yes, sir. You're yawning, man. You're about to fall asleep on me. No, man, I was coughing. I was coughing. I just had oh, COVID. like a big week. yawn. He's falling asleep. But anyway. <laughs> no, um, man. You know, he's been – the game has slowed down for him. I just feel that about him, you know, watching him play. Um, he's been really good, really good. Uh, Coach Wyatt Sparkman with the uh, College Heights Herald. I have a couple of questions that may be a little bit off topic here, but we're doing a story as students start to come back in about, like, the tornado and the tornado relief. And, you know, uh, y'all went out and helped out with uh, some of the tornado and helped pick up some uh, trees and uh, some branches. You know, I guess, how did that come about? And, uh, you know, how did that, you know, I guess that type of uh, togetherness with the team, how did that affect the relationships with, within the team? Well, why all those things you just said, you know, uh, we thought was much more valuable than practicing. If I remember correctly, uh, we did that on a Monday and we had a game on Tuesday against center. So practicing, we felt like those things you just discussed, we'd get a lot more from it. Um, some togetherness, you know, our guys being out there in this community, um, you know, understanding whatever bumps and bruises or bad things they think they got going on in their lives. That's bad. Those, those are not problems. Uh, these are real problems here. Then to have opportunity to give back some, you know, be a giver, be a giver in life, man. Uh, help some other people. Um, you know, it was no question. It was um, something that everybody needs at times. You know, it puts things in perspective. And I've said, I've told you all this, you know, uh, basketball, yeah, it's important to all of us. Um, athletics, you know, it's amazing. College athletics, even pro athletics, how much is put into it nowadays. Uh, but when you see something like this, that's the real world. Um, puts things much more back in perspective what we're dealing with every day. And then uh, I guess another note on that, you know, I guess were you affected or do you know if like any other players were affected by the tornado on that? Hey, well, we had some, I, I wasn't affected. No, I was, I live at more towards Allerton. It didn't affect us, but we had some people, you know, you know, Zach, you know, he had some things, uh, trees blown down in his yard. Um, Coach Cross, um, trees and, maybe some things on his house. Coach Hall, Coach Hall is not living in his, he's our strength coach. He's not in his house now. He's in a hotel. Uh, basically, 
blew part of his roof off, a tree came through it. Um, any of those three for sure, no players, no GAs um, were affected. But, yeah, we had some people on staff that was affected, affected wide. And, you know, again, you know, you still, when you drive down, I, I miss that day, how they did it. I like to see how they did it. Right here at this turnaround, that first, if you're going out, what, turn around, the roundabout right there, and you turn right, that's Nashville Road. And that first house on the left, that big old white house up there, that's where we County worked in that neighborhood. And there was brush stacked all the way down that high, that driveway, 10 feet tall, 20 feet wide. I missed how they moved that. How did they get all that out of there? So quickly without burning it. I can't imagine how they how they did all that, but uh, well, I don't know if that's up that answer your questions. You got some more about all that? Uh no, that was about it. I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate it. Is that it? Anything else? Everybody good? Yep. All right, guys. All right.